All right, today we're going to look at how to find the area of regular polygons. <clears throat> uh, we need to remember that regular polygons are polygons where all the angles are congruent and all of the sides are congruent. So that information is going to come uh, into play and be important as we think about the different types of regular polygons. First thing we're going to look at is the vocab for an apothem which is a segment of a regular polygon joining the center to the midpoint of any side. So if you have a circle, uh, you, have a, you could have a polygon inside the circle. A lot of times we're going to have, or a polygon on the outside of the circle. doesn't matter, but the apothem is the center of that polygon to the midpoint of the side. So it's the perpendicular bisector. If it was around a circle, it's a terrible hexagon. Same concept, but in this case, the radius of the circle and the apothem of the polygon are the same thing. The radius of the apothem is a segment of a regular polygon joining the center to any vertex. So if I have my regular pentagon here, center, in this case, the radius of the apothem and the radius of the circle are the same. All of the radii that I would draw in that regular polygon would be the same. Same thing up in apothem. All of the apothems in this regular polygon would be the same. So some regular poly, in order to find the area of a regular polygon, it's one half of A times P. The A stands for the apothem, so we're going to need that every time. And then the P stands for the perimeter. So for some of our regular polygons, like an equilateral triangle, we have now, we have multiple shapes, multiple ways to find the area of an equilateral triangle. Because we have one half of base times height. We also have one half AB sine C. We also have... Um, side squared root 3 over 4. But because this is also a regular polygon, we could do 1 half of the apothem times the perimeter. Apothem. And then we would have a 30, 60, 90 in order to find other sides. So if we give the apothem in an equilateral triangle. So for the first example, an octagon with an apothem 4.8 and a side of 4. So apothem 4.8, because it is an octagon and it has a side length of 4, we actually know the perimeter right away, which is 4 times 8 is 32. We don't even need to draw this regular polygon because the area is 1 half of the apothem 4.8 times the perimeter 32, and we get 76.8 centimeters squared. A square with a side of 24 inches and an apothem of 12. Again, a square. We're going to use 1 half AP for now, but we wouldn't necessarily have to. We would have side squared. We could just do 24 squared. But using this new formula, apothem equals 12. And because the side is 24, we know that the perimeter is 24 times 4. So the area is 1 half of the apothem 12 times the perimeter 96. And we get 576 inches squared.
find the perimeter and the length of the apothem and the area. Uh, really, if we just find the area, we're going to be doing everything else. And round our answers to the nearest tenth. Uh, we're only going to round to the nearest tenth when needed. So first case, we have an equilateral triangle, and the radius of the triangle is given to us, which is 8. Again, we could use other formulas to do this, but we're going to stick with 1 half AP because that's what we are going over today. So we're going to use the fact that I can draw the apothem, the center, to the midpoint of the side. And I know that because all the radii are going to be the same and all the apothem are going to be the same, this is going to cut it into a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And since across from 90 is 8, that means across from 30 is 4, and across from 60 is 4 root 3. So that's going to give me my apothem of 4. And then because my side is 8 root 3, that means my perimeter is 24 root 3, which means my perimeter is going to be 48 root 3 inches squared. Next one on the right, we have a regular pentagon. We need to remember that in a regular pentagon, there are all the angles add up to 540, and since there's five of them, that means that each angle is 108 degrees. That's important because when we draw in the radius of the pentagon, and then the apothem, we cut that 108 into 54 degrees. And so we have the apothem that we're going to need to find, and then our x value. So we need to remember our trig here. Uh, in order to find the apothem, we're going to do this sine of 54 is equal to a over 20. And so when I cross multiply and do 20 sine of 54, I get 16.18 for my apothem. And then I need to find my x value here, which is only part of my side. But in order to find x, I'm going to do cosine of 54 equals x over 20. So 20 times the cosine of 54. And I'm going to get that x is 11.7. Seven five six, And the reason why I was finding x is because that's going to help me find my perimeter. If I multiply it by 2, it will give me my side length of the pentagon. And then if I multiply it by 5, after that, it will give me my perimeter. So take that answer and multiply it by 10. And I am going to get that my perimeter of this pentagon is 117.557. So, area is one half of my apothem, 16.18, times my perimeter of 117.557. Next one I have is a regular hexagon. Regular hexagon, remembering that all the angles are 120 degrees. 
so when I draw in the radius and then the apothem, I'm going to break it up into a, another 30, 60, 90 triangle. If across from the hypotenuse is 25, then across from 30 is going to be 12.5, which means across from 60 is 12.5 root 3, which means my sides of the hexagon are going to be 25, and my perimeter is going to be 150. So my area, 1 half of my apothem, 12.5 root 3, times my perimeter of 150. And I can keep this one in exact form, which is 937.5 root 3 centimeters squared. Go ahead and pause the video uh, and answer numbers six and seven. The apothem of a regular, I'm sorry, the area of a regular pentagon with an apothem of eight, and the area of a regular octagon with a perimeter of six. And then you'll submit these answers.